All right, so I'm noticing in some of the areas where the metal was still a little wet, even though I put the clear coat on it, got some more orange. And I know it's under the clear coat because it's not coming off on my finger. So today I'm installing the rear defroster in the Miata. And what you're gonna need is one, you need to go on to eBay or somewhere and you can buy this multi-switch that goes on the left-hand side of the dash. It will go here. So I'm gonna have to replace one of these switches. Probably gonna remove the electric mirror control because I'm going with aftermarket mirrors anyway. So this guy can come out and then this guy's gonna go in. I got just the defrost switch. Otherwise they have one that's a defrost and a stock fog light switch right here. Either one will work for the defroster, but if you get the one with the switch here, then you can obviously wire in some fog lights and have it on the dash like it should be stock. Once you have this switch, which you also need to order a main relay and I'll show you where that goes right now. If you've ever wondered looking in the back of your car what this little dongle is right next to the trunk release. It's just this random dongle just kind of hanging out. That's for this and you just connect it like so and then you can wire tie it up out of the way or tuck it in however you feel fit but you have to have that relay. So you need the switch for the dash, this relay here, and then if you have a power antenna where the antenna goes up whenever the radio comes on or not, then you should already have this. An antenna fuse, and then there's a defog fuse, 10 amp. You need to make sure not only that you have this connector and it just plugs right in right here. So if you don't have it, you can buy it. Find this plug next to the battery, plug it in. And then what you do is verify that it actually has a fuse in it. So we're gonna do that right now. Oops, old plastic. All right, so you get this guy off of here, and then it's just a little cap that opens up. Verify that you not only have both fuses, but that they're not popped, because that would be a pain in the butt, I'm trying to figure out why it's not working. So check it first, close it up, and then pop it back on. Then tuck it back out of the way, and we're good to go. So now you're gonna need a pick of some sort. To get the dash switch out so we're gonna do that pretty easy to do just kind of wedge your pick in on one side try not to damage the dash too much you can pull it straight out all right the wires are a little tight in there you're also going to want to remove your bottom cover here so that you can get this out of the way and find the wire harness that goes to the new switch So once you get the power window or whichever switch out you prefer, like if you don't have cruise control, there'll just be a blank plate here. This is the dimmer for the dash lights. Pretty sure you need that. But if you don't have cruise, you can remove this blank plate. Then you still have your power mirror switch. I'm gonna remove the power mirrors. And then I believe this is the connector for my rear defroster switch. So we'll push that one out of the way. Get our defroster switch. Yep, that looks like the right one. So we're gonna plug that in like so. And then we just slide this guy right on in there. All right, perfect. Also, if you're doing this on a soft top, there's gonna be a switch way up in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a switch right around there that will tell the car that the soft top is down. So you can't turn on the defroster with the top down. If that switch is damaged or isn't grounding or anything like that, then it's going to think the top is down and your defrost isn't going to come on. So if you get everything connected and you've checked all the fuses and your defrost still won't come on or the light on the dash isn't coming on, check the switch right here behind the driver's side seat, right behind the door where the top folds down at. And that switch is probably gonna be the culprit. You also need to make sure that the pigtail to your hard top is connected. Doesn't look like mine is. I'm gonna do that now. This pigtail has to be connected here. Can't see All right. Now that that's connected and we have our switch in the dash, we have our relay in the trunk and we have our defog fuse. Everything should just work. Now on 89 to 93, I think it's a 89 to 93, there was a timer in the dash 
instead of the dash switch. So you won't have the plug right behind the dash switch like I had. It's gonna be further up in here with the relays. There'll be a connector that's not plugged into anything. I'll try and put a link in the description that takes you to a website that shows you all the details about this, all the years and the part numbers. Again, if you have an 89 to 93, you're gonna need that timer switch instead of the dash switch because the way the 93 works, when the heat is on, it comes on for seven minutes on the defrost and then it'll shut back off. It's a timer-based system. So whenever you turn the heat to low, I think it is, the defrost automatically comes on if everything's connected properly and working properly. On the 94 and up, you have the switch, so you have to remember to turn it off. When you turn the car off, obviously defrost turns off, but when you start the car back up, if this is pressed in, then you're gonna have defrost on. So what we're gonna do now, because I have a 94, there should be a light on the dash that comes on letting me know that I have defrost on. And there it is, right there. So the defrost is not only connected properly, but it is working. I'll test it more once there's actually frost on the rear window. That's how you set up your defrost if you ever wondered for a hard top or even a glass windowed soft top with defrost built in. All of that stuff has to be working and connected and then you will have defrost in your Miata. Comment below if you have any constructive criticisms, questions, or any other info you'd like to share. Don't forget about the Harley giveaway that will be extended till January. I'll change the notes on the giveaway page on my blog. Be sure to click the store link in the video description below to see the info and to purchase a $20 raffle ticket, one in 1,000 will win the Harley and it will be shipped to you anywhere in the United States. So $20 could win you potentially a $10,000 vintage Harley. Every dollar goes to help the channel. So if you don't want to buy a raffle ticket, but you want to buy a sticker or a t-shirt or anything like that, you can also find those in the store. You can pre-order the brushed aluminum cup holders I'm going to be putting out pretty soon. It's a about three, 400 bucks just to punch out a few of them. So I'm gonna have to have the money ready to go for that. So if you can pre-order, that'll definitely help get them to market sooner. If you pre-order, you're gonna get yours first before anyone else. So definitely click the link in the description below so you can see all the different items for sale or to purchase a raffle ticket for the Harley. That way we can get an LS1 and a T56 six-speed tranny out of a Camaro and pop it into this Miata. And then we'll be racing in the springtime at Pikes Peak International Raceway. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified instantly and you don't miss any of new videos share on social media it really helps me out guys and as always keep on modding Do you post as little fucking shithead on Facebook.com? Yeah. Did you say, fuck Wayne's work vlog? Fuck him and his stupid ass? Yeah, a while ago. So?